Hi folks, so I thought I might do something a little bit different for a video today, uh, but before you guys ask, the reason I'm wearing a uh, smart jacket is simply because my t-shirt is the same colour as the uh, as my backdrop and I, I didn't want to just be like a floating head type of thing, not that that would really, never mind. Anyway, today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, file naming conventions, you know, the most exciting of all topics. Um, but it's something that I've been planning on making a video about for quite some time but I never really thought that there was ever enough to the subject matter to actually really warrant, uh, you know, like a long thought out sort of research video about it. Um, so I thought just, you know, I'd shoot from the hip on this one. And then if I had any other thoughts or if you guys offered some particularly interesting feedback, I might do a follow up video, which is sometimes what I uh, what I tend to do. So uh, as you can see here, I have the four main um, sort of use cases of and, and conventions of, of, of file naming and I put up a little poll here on on Mastodon. I will put a link to it down in the description below but there is a, a good chance if you're watching this video quite far after the fact that either the poll would have ended or that the uh, the post may very well have just been taken down. I only have posts up for a, for a limited uh, time. So um, make with that as you will but it's always been a topic that has fascinated me because um, it's one of those things where there doesn't seem to be a huge consensus. I mean, even uh, if I look to the to the results coming in now, and I won't say what they are right now because they could change by the time this video goes out. Uh, there's still 23 hours left on the um, uh, on on the uh, on the um, uh, poll, and uh, there's still everything to play for here. But um, yeah, it's quite spread across. Uh, you know all four of those uh, those options. Now one has arisen as a particular favourite, uh, but I won't say which one. Although I'm going to kind of guess that partly because it's on Mastodon and and partly because it's you know people who follow me on social media, uh, it, you many of you are probably likely to, to to guess towards one. But I'll talk a little bit about my choice, which is dashes. Um, so I've spoken with, with Drew, some of you guys may know him, some of you may not, that's alright, you, you can follow him on Mastodon as well, he's pretty fun, he's at U-O-O-U, I don't know why he chose that username, but uh, maybe he wanted something easy to spell, I don't know. Anyway, so uh, I had a chat with him about this, and he um, uh, generally uh, goes with underscores, if I remember correctly, uh, which is a convention uh, that I see quite a lot. Um, especially among like programmery uh, people and people, you know, techie people in general, because they sort of know about the history of why you, uh, why spaces are considered a non-ideal convention. Uh, so, um, and, and a lot of that is just because of older file naming systems or the idea of having, you know, sending a file that to be used across multiple operating systems. So, for example, older uh, Windows file systems had a lot of problems when it came to spaces in their titles uh, in the in the file name or certain characters, uh, some older uh, Windows-based file operate, uh, file systems, uh, they will only support ca uh, file names of a certain length or they will only support, they're not case sensitive, um, and all of these various different things, certain characters that they won't allow. Uh, and, and that can always be a problem with any operating system because there are going to be like control characters that do things outside of file names. You're going to need to, be, you know, sort of uh, operate file names within a context, which... So, so, so there will I, I, there will never be like a file name system that I can think of off the top of my head. I'm no expert, of course. Uh, where where you can have where any characters are, are, are free reign. But that aside, and I'm rambling a little bit here. Is is you know what do we go with now? I uh, I'm not the biggest fan of spaces for a, for a number of reasons. Um, partly because when you're like operating on the command line, uh, having to just deal with file names with spaces is just an added. Mm, it's just. You know, it's just, it's just something else to do. Just another, just another uh, problem. Um, spaces, I would say, are probably the most readable. Uh, they are something that I would say they're probably like the the option that the layperson would go with the most would be with spaces. Um, and I, I think I know. Uh, you know, I, I, I mean, I, it's not something that you tend to notice all the time. But I think if I'm if my memory serves me correctly, uh, it is the um, it is the sort of the dominant convention among most non techie people I know is just just to go with spaces. It's easy. It's convenient to type. Nowadays. All operating systems don't really have a problem with them. I mean, you, you, they even kind of work in URLs, although it's, again, a little bit 
odd in that regard. Uh, but I even see URLs nowadays where you have spaces in the names where the percentage 20 is sort of taken out and, and made a bit more human readable, which uh, it makes sense, I guess. It makes sense. Having a URL with spaces in, though, what's that all about? I mean, what's that? that? That does seem a bit weird, doesn't it? Where does the URL, like when you're just, talk, when you're just mentioning a URL in a sentence, in, in, in a written sentence, um, how do you then know where the URL begins and ends? Well, you could put uh, quote marks around it, for example. And um, with with quote marks, uh, and you could do that with file names or spaces as well. It's, again, an added mm, something to do. Um, it's, it's added faff. It's an added potential problem later on down the line. Uh, and I've heard various different anecdotes with people having issues with spaces in their file names, uh, many of which are historical. Uh, but for example, uh, I've, I've known people have problems with uh, FTP using FTP with peculiar file name uh, naming conventions and all that kind of stuff. So, so what I w kind of want, what my option looks towards, is an option that is uh, first of all applicable across multiple operating systems across time. You know, something that is as compatible as, as possible. Uh, additionally, something that is readable, but also uh, something that is is typeable as well. And this is where, so my, my issue with camel case is that y you don't necessarily get a good clear distinction between words. I don't th find camel case to be particularly human readable beyond basically what you can see there on the screen, a, a three words file name, basically. Um, and um, it, it, it's not necessarily clear wh where, you know, one word ends, the other might begin. I mean, of course, you've got the case system for that, but it might not necessarily catch the eye as quickly. Um, but it is quick. It's convenient, it's easy, um, you know, like autofills can 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 respect it. Um, e yeah, easy to type, that's easy enough to read. But then if you're using an operating system that isn't case sensitive, your camel case completely, go, you know, uh, it just falls apart. Um, I've already talked a little bit about spaces. Um, but yeah, so so it's to me, it's, it's always been down between dashes and underscores. There is one that I have left out. And that is uh, full stops. Um, full stops definitely something that, that I don't have a problem with on a technical level. But um, the trouble is, of course, is um, first of all, um, if you start obviously if you start a f um, file name with a dot, uh, at least in in Unix-like file systems, or at least with Linux, um, maybe other operating systems as well. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, if you start a file name with a full stop, that file name then becomes uh, hidden. Uh, or, or becomes you know seen as a see, seen as a hidden file, um, which which sort of me to me means that like the 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 full stop or as the Americans like to call it the period character, uh, it's functional before it's um, you know before it can be used as a an aesthetic operator if if you know what I mean. So you know something something that that is is meant to sort of work with the eye, work with the the visual style of a, a file name. So. That's why, I, and also I don't see full stops used very often. There are a few distinct cases that I've seen them in, and there are probably a few distinct cases that some of you guys have seen them in. But for all intents and purposes, as as, as uh, many times I've seen full stops ra raised to the top of these kind of debates uh, and these kind of discussions about file naming conventions, uh, there it just it just well it just rubs me up the wrong way a little bit really as well so but but not necessarily for hugely rational reasons people who do decide to use full stops as spaces in character names they tend to have pretty good reasonings be reasoning behind it and it's perhaps something worth looking up with but because it's something that I see so rarely in practice in day-to-day -day, uh, usage uh, then I haven't included it on the list the the poll only allows me four options so because I was going to go with upper case uh, upper camel case and lower camel case as well um, because I've seen I've seen both around as well. So with uh, so so it's dashes and underscores. And to me, the thing that does lean one a little bit more over towards the other is quite frankly that dashes are easier just to just to type. Uh, I know that you can set up key bindings, for example, so that um, shift and space is an underscore. And I've seen a lot of people uh, do that, uh, which is a, which is a potential solution. But I don't tend to like to to I tend to like to keep my computer and the computers that I use a little bit more on the um, um, the sort of the defaults out of the box side a little bit uh, so that it allows me to help other people who use Linux that are perhaps a little less techy. There are a number of people in my life who, whilst you know, use Linux on a day to day basis, not particularly technical users, uh, very rarely, if ever, have, have issues with it, which is always something that I'm very 
you know, glad about. Um, but if there was something that was to arise and I've completely customized my computer to, you know, to fit my entire customized uh, and unique workflow, as many people in tech tend to do, uh, you can potentially be a little bit out of footing when it comes to how non-technical users interact with uh, with computers, so I, I tend to try and keep defaults reasonably uh, middle of the road, simply for the, for those reasons. Which is why um, having a shift space underscore mm, it's it's fine. It's a workable solution, especially if you're perhaps a programmer uh, or or someone that do, that where file naming conventions are quite important as part of their day to day job. Um, then then definitely you know underscores are, are certainly an option there. Also with underscores, which are really quite good, is because they are a drop in like for like replacement. Um, uh, you can use a file ne- real, file renaming script to um, remove all the underscores and replace them with something completely different, i.e. a space, or even just a dash. Whereas with dashes, there are a couple of contextual issues. Whereas dashes are not necessarily... Uh, operating characters or like you know characters that do something functionally outside of a file name usually inside of a file name and inside how we read them they can so for example uh, the um, you know the the standard recognition for dates which is uh, four um, four character year dash two character month dash two character day uh, well then you're already using dashes or or hyphens in your file name so it it then there is not a natural distinct separator between um between um the date and then what you know any any kind of suffix you might want to add to that file name so uh that is that is one of the reasons that's one of the reasons why uh drew has told me that he tends to prefer underscores over dashes is because they are a distinct you know contextually speaking they are distinct you know they they are a distinct space type character you don't use underscores I can't think of any other context you'd use underscores unless you were emulating a space character. There is probably a historical reason for it. There's probably a reason why they're included on things like typewriters and all that kind of stuff. But to my knowledge, and if you do happen to know, please feel free to leave a comment or let me know because that's kind of interesting. So yeah, Drew told me one of the reasons why he isn't too fond of the the hyphen. Uh, although why he, while he doesn't consider it um, a particularly you know egregious way of naming files. Um, when you've got a like a, a word that is usually hyphenated, it doesn't necessarily fit naturally within that file name because you then can't uh, make a distinction between spaces and then hyphens within words. Um, something which, generally speaking, doesn't make a file any more or less, um, or a file name more or less readable and understandable. However, if you're then going to run through a uh, bulk renaming script through the whole uh, through a, a directory of files, then you're going to come up against a few minor consistency issues. But um, I guess in my world that is the that is the closest thing to a resolution. But I suppose in many ways none of these are, are necessarily completely perfect. There are a few other uh, things that I haven't touched on. So for example, um, dashes allegedly are better for search engine optimization uh, because dashes. Um, uh, sort of uh, crawlers and bots and all this kind of thing make a distinction between the words in between dashes, uh, whereas they don't for underscores. And this, uh, an example of this is that if you double click, and I think I can actually do it on this preview here. So if you double click on a word in, um, oh, I don't think I can. Oh, yes, I can. So if I do double click dashes there, Uh, or double click a word in dashes, you will see that uh, only one word is selected within that file name. Whereas if I do underscores for life, double click on that, the whole file name is selected. And uh, I've met, or I've seen people on uh, forums and message boards and the like who actually say that this behavior, one way or the other, has made their decision for them. Uh, With spaces, of course, you just double click and you select a word at a time. And with camel case, you double click, you select the entire uh, file name. So I just thought I might uh, uh, I might throw that in for consideration. It doesn't necessarily bother me one way or the other, but um, it does seem that from a sort of a, f- a, a functional technical level in just day to day how UIs and all this kind of stuff is put together, that dashes kind of to me make the most sense, but. Uh, again, this this is a subject that's steeped in a lot of history, and also in a lot of um, uh, habit. And very, uh, obviously, different programming languages have different conventions of their own as well. Uh, I've understood people have problems with Python using hyphens and all this kind of stuff. So, to me, 
uh, there doesn't seem to be a one size fits all. There doesn't seem to be a file naming convention to end all file naming conventions. If there is, please definitely let me know in the uh, in the comment section, in the descriptions, on Mastodon, or however you can uh, usually get in touch with me. But um, but yeah, and uh, if there's enough time and you're on Mastodon, feel free to go and and, and vote in the poll. I've left multiple selectors. Uh, multi, you know, you can choose multiple uh, options if you wish. Because if you happen to sometimes like dashes and sometimes like underscores um, for whatever reason, then I've I've allowed that choice if you so wish. Uh, I think one person may very well have selected everything except spaces because that they that, you know and all that kind of stuff. So I suspect, but I you know. Um, but yeah, so I thought I might prattle on about file naming conventions for a short while. It's something I've, I've wanted to talk about, it's something I've wanted to get your guys' feedback on uh, for quite some time. Um, and, uh, and and knowing you guys, you guys will almost certainly have some interesting uh, opinions to weigh in on this subject with. So I look forward to those as well. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. That's my case made. Um, also, one of the things I should mention as well uh, is um, when I had this discussion quite some time ago with Drew, is that when he does underscores in his local file system file naming conventions, he has a little script that renames web files uh, with the dashes. Uh, so it, it replaces underscores with dashes before it then goes to web. Um, and um, uh, And he said he did this as a matter of like, convention by osmosis because every other website seems to do this with the interesting exception of wikipedia um but um but when we sort of sort of discovered this together you kind of realized oh well a lot of the stuff i do i don't really care for the search engine optimization side of things and uh you know so anyway that's just a little bit of a rattle what i'll do of course is i will li I'll link drew's mastodon account down in the description below since i seem to keep talking about him like he's in the room um but uh, and hey drew by the way i'm sure you'll watch this video because you do tend to watch a lot of mine but it's good to see you. how you doing man um yeah let me know how things are going in the in in the comments or on whatever um <laughs> if i don't see you before um but yeah so i think i'm going to wrap it up there i think i think this is plenty long enough to prattle on about a uh, a rather inconsequential topic, especially considering what's going on in the world today. Um, now, uh, one thing that I do want to let you know, a little bit of shameless self-promotion here, uh, is that I will um, is that it's uh, worth checking my website, chrisware.uk, um, which is actually I think you can find a link to it. Well, I'll try and put a link to it in the in the description of this video. If failing that, it will be on my uh, on my videos channel page. It'll be around. It's, it's chrisware.uk. And um, it'll have all the links to all the stuff, all the projects that I'm working on. Uh, but I'm resurrecting the old channel, um, Ours is the Theory, which is a channel that me and a few of my friends put together a long time ago. Uh, quite a few videos for it, mostly for Game of, Th Game of Thrones, hence the name. Um, but we're probably going to be looking at maybe uploading some more video content there, maybe a few, you know, video essays talking about films and TV shows and all that kind of stuff. Um, just so that it doesn't sort of, uh, you know, get in the way of any other channel content. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in in hearing my thoughts on at the moment, it's it's like Game of Thrones and The Mandalorian because we're not really in the new content stage yet. But there will be some stuff going up pretty soon, no doubt. The lockdown will assist with that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, like I said, I'll put a link to that channel. I'll try and put a link to that channel down in the description below as well. But if you ever at a loss for uh, where any content that I'm putting out might might be because um, I don't always make video in fact to be honest I don't actually make that much content for this channel at all anymore um, I should do I should do I like it I enjoy it but uh, in a lot of cases I do stuff with the Project Chronicle channel which is just me and, and my mates you know messing around it's great fun but it's not exactly something that loads of people are going to flock to watch um, and of course there is Gaming with Werewolves my gaming channel and of course I stream a lot on Twitch twitch.tv slash chrisware all of these links will be available in my uh, on my website but also if for example you want to watch me on Twitch streaming but you don't want to have a Twitch account what you can do is uh, there is a link to an RSS feed that just pings um, RSS every single time that I go on a live stream so even if you're not signed up to Twitch um, if you have a decent RSS reader uh, you can, um, or an RSS setup of any variety, uh, you can still catch me. Uh, so yeah, lots of reasons to uh, to visit my website. I put all kinds of stuff up there from time to time, uh, mostly informational stuff, long lists of, of apps that I recommend for various things, all that kind of stuff. So there you go. There's some there's some uh, self promotion. Uh, I'm <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, it's the price of the price of a video, isn't it? It's not like I've got raid shadow legends at the beginning of everyone. Or hell, I don't even monetize this channel anymore. But uh, 
anyway thank you guys very much for joining it's a pleasure as always and um oh there's a new video going up on uh, on the gaming channel as well yeah. anyway <laughs> uh, until next time i've been chris ware and you've been awesome take care now toodaloo